Yeah. And scared the way, scared the, you know, scared the hell out of the companies competing with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and today, I, in just a few hours, just about an hour before we started the show, I, I got this uh, message from a person who's running a new site and just created a, a call for a boycott, similar to something I did before, uh, against the companies that build those cartels to extort Android, because it's usually the same companies, including Apple and Microsoft. Uh, so, you know, people do try, and, and, and this person actually contacted me a while ago, and he was asking, what should we do, well, what can we do about it? And mm-hmm. I told him, my petition is not going to help. I, I just, I, you know, I sign petitions sometimes, but I, I don't think, I don't think if some, lots of people, like, uh, say, oh, Uganda is killing gay people and stuff, and, you know, let's sign a petition and send it to them. Like, they, you know, what's that going to do? Well, what's, how is this going to help? You know, they get this letter with, like, names on it, some people in a different country, you know, why should they care? Uh, yeah. So so this is why it's lots of efforts, and, and, and we're trying to figure out what to do about it. And I, I don't think in a lot of a lot of campaigns, uh, sort of moving away from what the, some of the subjects maybe that we're talking about now, but in a lot of campaigns, I don't think a lot of publicity actually does the campaign itself any good. When you get a campaign that hits the mainstream media and there's outrage and everybody's ca- you know, putting their ten pence worth in about their particular view, if anybody was to back down to the uh, to the campaign's demands or requirements, it would weaken their position of authority. And I think sometimes that when a campaign gets so much momentum and so much popularity that everybody's talking about it, it will be the last thing that ever um, comes to fruition because, the, say, a government that would receive this uh, petition or campaign wouldn't want to be seen to bow into every sort of major protest that hit the news. Otherwise, everybody with uh, an issue that they wanted uh, resolving would be on the television and uh, bringing it into the limelight. And it's a very difficult, very difficult uh, thing to to be able to. Uh, I don't think it's even television worth because this is a very unique no. type thing, isn't it? It's, it's, well, it's, it, this is a problem you see, and this is uh, what I think we've been touching on all evening. You know, it's. It's, it, I think it's perceived as a very geeky problem because people don't realise the detrimental effect it does have on their lifestyle of going out into the shop and buying a, a mobile phone of their choice, a smartphone of their choice. People don't realise when they go into uh, a, a computer shop and, and buy a PC, a laptop, whatever, and it comes preloaded with Windows. They don't see um, that there's a detrimental effect um, on their lifestyle. For them, that's the norm. And if they did know, then... Uh, they make their purchasing decisions. I think would be very different, and their demands in what they want on a on a computer system would be very different as well. Um, it, some people have realised already. I, I know it's a, probably not the best way to realise about alternatives and you know, this sort of alternative computing experience. But the one thing that Apple, with its Macs and all its products, has done is raise people's awareness from the traditional. The only thing in computing is Microsoft. Um, so whatever we want oh, to say no, about... No, no, no. You, you have to go back to the uh, the early days of... Uh, it's probably you mean at IBM or something. Because remember, Apple has always been around. Yeah, but you see, we're talking about average users here now, Roy. I mean, whatever people want to say about average users, um, the average users are the consumers that make or break a company. Um, we can have four or five tech geeks and industry experts giving their opinions on things, but if the mainstream consumer doesn't buy the products that they're talking about, then the company folds or the product uh, is killed. And the the mainstream uh, buyer, consumer, certainly in the UK, um, buys Apple products now and realises that traditionally, when they thought Microsoft was the only solution on on the desktop and in computing, now realises that there is a wealth of uh, alternatives, just the same way that Firefox introduced people to a wealth of new browsers, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the one good thing, if we can say that, that Apple has done. It's raised people's awareness of alternatives. I still get asked the question when I'm putting Linux on machines, will I still be ac- able to access my email? And some people still believe that email is traditionally only accessible via Microsoft. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, we well, can laugh. It's tied to an application. It, it yeah. makes sense, though. You, you, you know, a person who's not used them before. Actually, lots of applications used to be very much tied to the data. So if you wanted to access, say, a, a stock price or something, you need to get a certain application that trades a specific feed in a specific mm. format to do that. So they think that the email is something that's, uh, tailored to a, an application or vice versa. They don't understand there is this thing called a pro- Actually, if it was a, down to Microsoft, they would probably change the protocols, but I don't think they had enough power to change the operation, operational things at this level. Even though they did change a few things, I'll tell you, one of the things I have to work on now is, is trying to write patches for an IMAP uh, daemon 
to deal with uh, retracting emails, which isn't really supported by SMTP. Uh, but that's because Microsoft decided to very graciously implement extensions to the standard and to then have all this functionality that isn't supposed to exist. And certain mail clients cannot support this because it makes no sense. I mean, what is a retraction? It's like I send you email, you can receive the email, and then I decide, oh, please don't send this to this person. <laughs> well, it's already been sent. You know, it makes no sense. But Microsoft is making all these hacks. Uh, you know, and they would have changed the way email works. So you say, can I still access my email? Well, yes. But if you want to use the exchange so-called protocols for, you know, doing calendar stuff and retraction, well, Microsoft basically kind of bastardized quite quite a few of these things too. Uh, fortunately, not sufficiently because uh, lots of mail servers are still based on something that actually works, and that's not Microsoft. Well, what I think we'll do, because um, time's ticking, I know you've got some tracks. Um, some Creative Commons tracks. I think. Um, oh, it, can... it's not. It's it's fairly fairly shareable. So the, the art is basically promoting. I'm yeah. not sure it's uh, it's not necessarily Creative Commons, but. Oh, right. Beg your pardon. Um, I think um, we can start looking at putting one of those on for the ending of the show. Um, but uh, before we do, have you got any other topics that we want to briefly skim over? I know there's one very quick uh, mention I would like to make um, after you've uh, had the opportunity to bring up anything that you you've got on your mind. Well, one of the things I want to mention is the uh, netbooks. Uh, I made some headlines recently. There is always, you know, is it dead? Is it not dead? Is it almost dead? Uh, is it being replaced? Is it being just transforming into tablets, like just having touch screens instead? Uh, and that's that's a discussion that's been been thrown around for a while. And I still see them in the shops, though. And uh, so I don't think it's dead. I, I want to make a point here about that because uh, I've been thinking about this earlier today and I'll, I'll just put it in the form of a headline. Tablets, what's the point? When I'm, I, I quite presume that my uh, computing habits aren't unique and there are many, many people who have the same type of habits uh, and computer use as I do. Now, for me, the tablet, if we get past the fact that I cannot stand touch screens, as whilst I love my HTC Desire, I can't stand the touch screen. I've never got on with it and never will. Um, I suffer it, but th that's about the best I'll get with it. But with tablets, they fall in a strange category for me, because when I go away on holiday, I think uh, about this time last year, I was um, I was away in, on holiday and I took my netbook with me because I was able to do a few bits and pieces and uh, keep up to date with what was going on. But the tablet falls into a, a very strange category. If I'm on the train, for example, I can pull out my mobile phone. It's small. It fits in my pocket. One of those tablet things, they're not the, the smallest of beasts. And it's certainly not something that you can conceal if you walk through an area of London where I work, which is, say, less than salubrious and uh, is a place where you may not want to display any high-value uh, high goods. So the mobile phone's fantastic for me. I can pull out my HTC Desire. It's, the screen's a couple of inches in size, and I can flick on, get my things done. The tablet then is just far too big for that so it's no good as a device for traveling if I'm using it in a fixed position for example on holiday or in a hotel room it's not uh, it's not easy enough for me to use in order to be productive so it hasn't got the keyboard therefore my netbook is fantastic it's a, a computer away from home as it were and it, it's useful but I just cannot see why these tablets are so popular the big mobile phones without all the functionality and the no good for sitting, you know, for sitting and uh, it typing. It's just where it is. It's just a phone with a big screen. Yeah. I always think uh, they could actually have a phone extend to an external screen sometimes, uh, so you can actually use your phone. Actually, isn't this what the Zoom is doing? The Motorola stuff. Uh, did you see that? The demos they had. Yeah, that, I've only paid a partial interest with tablets, it, and really more so on the uh, platforms that they're it's running. It's very much similar to what the Folio, Palm Folio, do you remember around 2007 they killed the thing? They were going to have this innovative thing that's like a phone, that phone PDA that connects to your, that turns into like a laptop that connects to a hybrid thingy. Right, uh, no. And now HP is going to do a, uh, what's it called, like a touchpad or something with pad. Uh, that's uh, it's going to run web web OS based on Linux. Uh, so it's, it's just the, the the whole ethos of a touch screen. I mean, as much as I knock the Windows tablets, um, I think I spoke about them last show. It's got a solid keyboard, which for someone like me, it suits me down to the ground. I mean, my HTC Desire, when it comes away on holiday with me, gets used as a, uh, can set it up as a Wi-Fi hotspot, and then just connect my netbook to it, and I'm off and away. Um, a very very useful feature. 
And, uh, and also, may I add, very, very quick, um, you know, my... Sorry. The, the worst, uh, the biggest fail in uh, uh, tablet PC that's ever been made is 